Hello, everyone, and welcome to the lecture on Ivan Alexievich Bunin. Bunin is a slightly less known writer uh, in the present day than many of the writers that we've read so far, uh, but he's still an extremely important writer. He was the first Russian to win the Nobel Prize for Literature, uh, and he's considered to be one of the finest prose stylists of the 20th century. Like many of the writers we've seen here, Bunin was from a noble family. He was born in Varonezh and grew up in the area of southern Russia and near the Don, mainly living on his family estate. And so he saw the Russia of the countryside. Uh, he was not an urban writer. He is a rural writer and focuses mainly on country life, kind of like Turgenev, with whom he has a lot in common. And his family uh, was one that had a long line of poets, including Anna Bunina, an early female poet from the 18th century, and Vasily Zhukovsky, one of the most important poets from the early 19th century, uh, one of the people who sort of prefigured and encouraged Pushkin. And so Bunin came from this line of uh, well-known and respected poets and was exposed to literature and poetry at a very early age. Bunin began publishing in the late 1880s, so when he was still a teenager, uh, just like many of the writers we've seen here, he was very precocious and began showing talent and interest in writing poetry in his teens. And at first he wrote primarily poetry. Uh, so he started off as a poet and then switched to prose later in life. And this is interesting, first of all, because we can see it in his writing that his prose, his later prose, which is what he became famous for and won the Nobel Prize for, has this strong poetic element. It's definitely prose and it's definitely realist prose. At the same time, it's full of the rhythmic and sound qualities of someone who is familiar with and loves to write poetry. It's also interesting, just as a point of interest about how writers develop in general, that he started off with poetry and moved to prose. Poetry seems to be something that people show a talent for at an early age and do their best work in at an early age. Uh, and prose is something that seems to develop later in life. Uh, so there's a standard line of thought that says that poets do their best work before they turn 25. Poets and mathematicians, interestingly enough. Um, and I think also uh, chess players tend to do very well early in life and then frequently lose their skill later in life. And so people often show tremendous talent for poetry very early on, uh, but don't really get started in prose until they're in their 30s and 40s at the earliest. And Boonen definitely followed this trajectory. He had both careers. He had a poetry career when he was in his teens and 20s and a prose career that he developed later in life in his 30s and 40s and 50s and so on. In the 1890s, he was already making a name for himself as a poetry writer. Uh, he also wrote sketches, uh, so he was also writing prose. And he was already making a name for himself and uh, was befriending um, other well-known writers of the time. Uh, he worshipped Tolstoy and did manage to meet him and uh, actually got in trouble trying to share Tolstoyan propaganda. And Tolstoy kind of said, you know, you, you stop, like, stop with the politics. Don't worry so much about that. Just focus on your writing, uh, which is what he ended up doing. And he became pretty close friends with both Anton Chekhov and the um, Marxist uh, Soviet realist writer Maxim Gorky. Uh, we're not reading Gorky here, which is a shame, but Gorky was an extremely influential figure in the 20th century. And he wrote basically realist prose. And he, like Mayakovsky, was a fiery communist who supported the Soviet regime and was one of the most important sort of writers of the revolution. And it's interesting that Bunin was such friends with Gorky because politically, later in life, they had nothing in common. They were diametrically opposed. But earlier in the 1890s, they were both flirting with some of the same political ideals. Uh, and they were both working to continue this tradition of Russian realist prose. Already at this time, Bunin was starting to experiment a little bit with prose. 
And so they were both working to develop and refine this prose style that was based on Russian realism, but was going to bring it into the 20th century. Bunin had been writing prose all along, uh, but around the turn of the century, he began concentrating more and more on prose. He did continue to write poetry for some time, but his focus switched more and more to prose. And he published a series of stories and novellas and also a novel about Russian country life. And he, again, like Turgenev, with whom he has a lot in common in many ways, uh, focused a lot on life in the country. He wrote about characters from the nobility, frequently the more minor nobility, um, unlike, for example, Tolstoy, whose characters are the, of the very high nobility, just like Tolstoy himself, Budin's characters were more often of the lower nobility of the smaller gentry, just like he was himself. And he got a certain amount of criticism for this in that his work was seen as sort of nostalgic for and glorifying uh, the Russian nobility and was very harsh and critical towards the peasantry. Um, a lot of people wanted to glorify the Russian peasants. Uh, many of these people had not actually lived in the country, had not actually spent time with peasants. Uh, Bunin had, and he was quite um, pessimistic about the Russian lower classes and life in the Russian countryside. In that way, he was quite similar to Chekhov, who also wrote uh, really grim accounts of what life was like for Russian peasants. Uh, Bunin, of course, was from the nobility, not from the peasant class, unlike Chekhov, uh, but he had a similar picture of the living conditions uh, for the Russian peasants in the countryside. And he did not support the revolution. So this is where he and Gorky had a big split. He did not support the revolution, although he had many liberal ideals and considered himself for a while to be a social democrat. Uh, he did not support the revolution itself and ended up emigrating to France in 1920. It was while he was in emigration that his career truly took off. He continued to publish and he received considerable acclaim uh, finally winning the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1933, and he was the first Russian to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. And this is an interesting thing. Uh, several Russians or Russian-speaking writers have won the Nobel Prize since then, most recently Svetlana Alexievich in 2015. Uh, she's Belarusian, but she wrote in Russian and writes in Russian. And these writers who have received the Nobel Prize, so Bunin, Solzhenitsyn, Alexievich, uh, they certainly deserve it, I would say. At the same time, it's notable that it's writers who are critical of the current Russian regime who tend to receive the Nobel Prize. The exception is Mikhail Sholokhov, who was friendly to or at least tolerated by the Soviet regime, and he won the Nobel Prize in 1965. Uh, at the same time, he's kind of the exception that proves the rule and that other Russian writers who won the Nobel Prize seem to win it as much for their political stance as their writing stance, which again is not to say that they didn't deserve it. Um, Bunin, Solzhenitsyn, and Alexievich certainly did deserve their Nobel. Still, um, it is notable that the first Russian to win the Nobel Prize for Literature was someone who was no longer living in Russia and never actually returned to Russia. Munin lived out the rest of his life in France. Um, he decided to stay in France for World War II. Uh, friends were trying to get him to New York, but he ended up kind of hiding out in a mountainside village and survived World War II that way. Um, he returned to Paris at the end of the war and spent the rest of his life in Paris. There was some talk of him returning to Russia, and he was invited to do so, but he ultimately decided to stay in Paris. So why are we reading Bunin? Uh, he's not a household name in quite the same way that Tolstoy or Dostoevsky are, but he was one of the most important writers in Russian in the 20th century. Uh, he took the 19th century tradition of Russian realism and developed it and sort of took it to its next level. Uh, and so what he's writing is still definitely realism. It's not even Impressionism like Chekhov, um, although it is in many ways very close to Chekhov's style. 
But he's taking this beloved tradition of Russian realism and turning it into something congruent with the style of the 20th century. And he was particularly considered to be a master of the short story, just like Chekhov. And of course, he was the first Russian to win the Nobel Prize for Literature. Perhaps the most important thing he did, though, was he established Russian emigre writing as an important literary force. So many people fled Russia following the Bolshevik Revolution, and there developed a large and lively emigre community that tried to keep up with the literary traditions of the homeland. And Bunin was one of the writers who gave this movement respectability. He showed that you could still write what was clearly Russian literature in Russian while in emigration. 